Um, but basically, this is just a, a get together to kind of show people a little bit of behind the scenes what we do here. So we thought maybe the best format to do this would just to be to kick around some questions. I think my favorite piece that I've done was um, when I profiled uh, Tom Crandall and his shop. Uh, T.R. Crandall's in New York, and yeah, they're on the Lower East Side now. Um, that, and I do have to name a second, which would have been another Makers and Shakers, um, Steve Burek at Retrofret. Um, I really enjoy interviewing people and getting to know them personally and, you know, writing profiles on people and encapsulating their personalities and passions. It is, it is a hard question because I've got 32 years of write, <laughs> writing for acoustic guitar and, you know, and I'm just unbelievably lucky in that I've met many of my favorite musicians in the world along the way. Um, you know, Paul Simon and James Taylor and Joni Mitchell and Jerry Garcia, Elvis Costello, Pete Seeger. It just kind of like, it's ridiculous. I mean, just a very fortunate place that I've been in. Um, but forced forced to choose one um i will choose the uh afternoon spent at david grisman's home studio with him and jerry garcia a couple of years before jerry died um talking with them and they were so fun and and uh, these uh you know codgers very funny old codgers uh having a great time playing together and then we did a photo shoot um uh, with Jay Blakesburg and they sat there they had these all these vintage guitars around and they sat there in the in Grisman's living room and and jammed um while the photos were going and I was just you know like okay <laughs> that Jerry, warm fuzzy feeling yes. yeah it's like this was just a I just felt incredibly lucky to be there yeah I, well I definitely like doing the lesson stuff I mean because it's, it's kind of in line with what I do most of my day, which is teach. Mm -hmm. And I did a series that ended up, ended up in a book uh, called Play the Blues Like. Uh, it was originally a, a book proposal I had about playing acoustic blues in open tunings. And, um, and when we talked with the editors, we ended up saying, well, let's make this a personality thing. So personality driven. So we did uh, uh, the Jimmy Page, we did a little bit of a, uh, uh, Robert Johnson, um, you know, so it was kind of taking riffs and licks and stuff from those players. And it was just kind of a neat project. The arc of it was kind of some early blues players and some modern players. I want to mention one thing too, as I got into fingerstyle blues, um, I took a few lessons from a guy named Duck Baker, mm -hmm. um, a wonderful fingerstyle player. He helped me out with the finger picking, sort of assigning specific fingers to specific strings. And that was a big help for me. So my favorite piece that I've worked on for acoustic guitar was probably the, the, the thing I did on the 50th anniversary, the acoustic guitars at Woodstock, uh -huh. uh, uh, which was during the uh, 50th anniversary of Woodstock. And that was just really fun tracking down all the history of finding out what did Mike Heron play on stage for the incredible string band, you know, for their 20 minute set at Woodstock. And basically I tracked down every, every acoustic guitar that was used at Woodstock, which was harder than it sounds. So yeah, that, I was, love that. That, that was, that was really fun. So. Yeah, maybe this is sort of secondary advice, but one of the things that I think it take, took me a while to come to grips with is your your strengths, your weaknesses are your strengths sometimes. So I'm not the fastest player in the world. And um, I'm also better at improvising than I am at learning something note for note. And what I've learned is make by I still try to get my technique better and I still try to learn things note for note, but by uh, accepting the opportunity of, you know, picking up a guitar and playing the same thing three different ways because I can't remember how to play it right the first time. That's how I end up composing a lot of music. So I would say that just accept yourself as a player and listen to yourself as a player, if you can, like detach yourself and really learn to listen as you're playing, which no matter what style you play and whether you're playing solo or in an ensemble, it's going to serve you pretty well. I would say, if I could add to that, is to, to find, to keep the love of music alive, whatever that means for you. That, there's no, learning music isn't like learning how to fly a plane. There's nothing that you have to learn. 
And if a teacher is pointing you in a direction that is really not your cup of tea, or if the guitar you're playing isn't something you really like, or if you can change it up at any point along the way and just keep loving it. Because if you love it, all of the other stuff will just be things you'll naturally want to do, whether that's, you know, playing nice and slowly or, you know, working well with a teacher or, you know, embracing your weaknesses as strengths or whatever it is. If you keep playing and you keep loving it, you will get somewhere. To be honest with yourself, I think when you're when you're learning how to play guitar, if you really want to get better, you should get definitely get a teacher, of course, but also you should record yourself to see really how you sound. The, the, tape, the tape never lies, I'm telling you. No, that is, it can be frightening. <laughs> That's one thing I like to tell my students, you know, I, I listen to myself all the time. I'm like, oh, so, you know, the tape never lies. <laughs>